Well, good morning, Good Life family. It's so good to be together, albeit digitally. Uh, as you're very well aware, Southeast Queensland has been put into this three-day lockdown, so it has obviously changed what we can do and how we can gather together. But so grateful that we can connect digitally. Uh, we have this each week anyway. Uh, now we all get to join in on that and be part of our online gatherings here at Good Life. Uh, just a little bit of an update for you is that the centre will be shut as per the guidelines and directions uh, for this lockdown. Uh, we won't reopen until Wednesday morning and of course that is pending the lifting of the current lockdown we find ourselves in. Uh, other than that, I'm going to throw to the team now. We're going to just have an awesome morning together uh, here online. But I just wanted to read a short scripture to you. It's one that I've been holding on to over the, I guess, the last probably 12 months even. And it's found in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16. And it says this, May the Lord of peace himself give you his peace no matter what happens. And the Lord be with you all. And my prayer for all of us today and as we enter into this week is that you would know peace. An abundance of peace that passes all understanding that can only come from Him. So have an amazing morning, and we'll keep you across all the developments as they happen in the coming days. God bless. Hi, welcome to Online Church. I'm Lauren, and it's great to be with you this morning. Today, Ryan is going to be sharing a message on community, and we're going to be taking some time to look at Scripture together. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for a great service. We are halfway through the Global Impact series that's happening at Good Life on Wednesday nights, but it's not too late to jump in. That happens at seven o'clock weekly. Men's night is happening this week. It happens on the first Wednesday of every month. The men just get together, hang out and eat stuff, I guess. But if you wanna go this week, you need to RSVP to Luke by Tuesday. There are so many amazing stories woven through the fabric of every aspect of what we do at Good Life. One of those places or one of those areas is the gym and we're going to hear from Shane now who also happens to be my husband and is very handsome and he's going to talk about some of the amazing things that happen in that area of our community. So my name is Shane and I've worked at the centre for quite a while now, well over 10 years and most recently have been managing the gym. So I get to work with all our wonderful gym members and amazing team. Yeah, one thing I like to talk about is the difference between a community and a crowd um, because it helps um, for me um, especially visualise what it is we actually do and how intentional we need to be because you know the big difference I suppose is to me a crowd is a bunch of people all congregated in the same place but not necessarily for the same reason and maybe there for their own um, you know their own motives whereas I picture community as being this group of people that come with things in common and actually come to yes to receive and there's you receive so much as part of a community but you also get to give so much as well and we get a really broad range of people here i, I try and think of us as the fa a family gym or the family gym so we want to empower people of all shapes sizes and abilities like that's our our mission our motive in there um, and so there's people who come in there on wheels, there's people who come in on crutches after just seeing a physio. Uh, there are athletes that train in our gym, people that lift really heavy things, like gym junkies that come regularly. And there's people that come twice a week and do a range of you know, heaps of different classes. And so, I mean, it's a, it's a really broad range, but the cool thing is that they're all together in the same spot. You know, we've created a safe space for all those different people types to come and actually learn from one another too and encourage one another. So we see that sense of community actually find different shapes and different ways of expressing itself and so there's like the big good life community and then there's the gym community and we, we tend to gather around fitness and we go to the same classes at the same time and so but then what I love seeing is that over time friendships form and trust forms and then you have people meeting after class and hanging around drinking coffee together having a cup of tea um, or just yesterday there's a group of people out here just behind me 
that played mahjong. <laughs> you know, playing a board game for, it must have been there for an hour or more. There was a big survey done just recently by one of the governing sort of fitness bodies in Australia that asked what they missed most about coming to the gym. And actually 80% of the people said the thing they missed the most was the connection to other people, that they were coming for their mental health, actually over their physical health. And that just renewed in me that idea of the, like the more we can foster those connections and, and the community side of what we do, that actually keeps people coming more often anyway. And so the byproduct is you'll, you'll move more because you'll come to class more and come to the gym more or you'll catch up more and, and walk together and stay active as opposed to sort of retreating, feeling lonely and just drifting the other way. So we, we do need to be really intentional about building community and that, that's what I tend to talk about it as building, it's something that we're continually working on and we have systems in place that help us remember to do that. So when someone comes through the door and they're, you know, it's their first time and they're a bit nervous, particularly in a gym setting, everything's new and all the people are new and they're wondering, like, oh, I've never done this fitness thing, I've never been to a gym before. It's trying to, one, <clears throat> be really friendly ourselves, so we have to be that that culture and that community to those people initially. Um, but then we're also trying to build bridges as well, right? Like when we're bringing someone to a class for the first time or we have them in the gym, it's just really simple things like saying, oh, you should meet so-and-so if they're there on the floor at the same time or if they're coming, they want to get a membership out. I don't just send them to the front counter, I send them to Ali or I send them to Yasmin or a person. And so I think it's that connection to the people, like not just the place, um, the people here make it a community. Thanks Shane for sharing. I hope that um, as you hear his heart and the heart that we have for our community here, that you're really encouraged in the work that you do and the place that you find yourself as well. We're going to take some time now to worship together with song and in song. So um, I know that sometimes that can feel a bit awkward when you're at home on your own if you're used to standing in a, in a communal worship setting. But I just want to encourage you, lift your voice and sing with everything that you have wherever you are.
for you And love just like you do And give as you have given to me That I will stand on words of truth I'll be moved by all that moves you And worship with my life and not a song And be completely yours that God's Word is alive. And so when we engage in it, when we read it, I really trust that God speaks to us through it. Last week, we, we saw and heard some interpretations of Psalms that people in our community have been reading and, and learning from. And this week, we're going to take some time to, to play Psalm 147 now. And we would love you to get your pen and paper out and take some time to just reflect and respond. After that, we're going to hear from Ryan. Psalm 147 from the NIV. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and he makes the grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. Hallelujah. It's so good for my soul to sing, to sing of God who is love. You build your people, even me. You are the great example of gathering and welcoming people and then uniting us. You restore me and you restore my friends. And you gently and patiently heal our broken parts. You know your creation by unique names. You are power expressed in love. So great. I will sing with a heart, fully grateful, and play music that expresses my heart and our hearts in ways that words can't. Hallelujah.
Hey guys, welcome. Uh, I'm excited today. We're going to be starting a new series on one of our core tenets, community. And, and community is really important to us here at Good Life, where we believe that people matter. But, but we want everyone to, to find a space in community. And so that's why our, our core tenet is a commitment to healthy and authentic community by modeling and inviting all to a place of belonging and purpose. Um, I remember moving to Australia, right? It was this thing that was exciting and, and daunting and unknown. And there was, oh, thank you. Uh, it, was, it was so exciting, but it was so unknown, right? I, I remember our, our 10 suitcases lined up um, next to the window and just waiting to, to come and you know, leaving the, the snow behind to come to the beautiful beach. It was, it was awesome. Um, but there was so much that was unknown about it. I remember one time, uh, not long after we moved, that my wife asked me to bring some pickles home, some dill pickles from the grocery store. And so I went to the grocery store and, you know, we have stereotypes in, in life because human nature is, is pretty consistent. And, and I'm one of those classic guys that does not like to ask where things are. I like to discover them for myself. And a trip that should have taken about five minutes to grab the pickles, if I didn't know where it was, I could ask somebody and then come home and we could eat dinner. It, it took me about 45 minutes because <laughs> I wasn't gonna ask anybody where the pickles were. But I remember, right, standing in the middle of Woolworths and, and thinking, I don't know where anything is in this grocery store. And just kind of the, the, the overwhelming sense of like everything uh, about Australia is new. And I had come here under the, the wild, um, misguided, preconceived notion that Australians spoke English and it was gonna be generally the same as America. Both of those things were, were, were so untrue. Um, and I took a five minute trip, turned it into a 45 minute trip because I was unwilling to ask somebody and the truth is, is I actually had to ask somebody anyway. And it was in that moment that I, I, I knew, right? I, I need people. I need community in my life. I, I'm still not a local. Eight and a half years in, um, I do know where the pickles are now. I do know that it's not called the grocery store. It's called the shops. Uh, and so I'm well on my way to being a part of the community. But, but one of the things that's really interesting, right, is is I was doing communion last week, and we were talking about coming to the Lord's table. We were talking about understanding and, and, and knowing our awareness of our need for Jesus. But as we stood around that table, right, as, as we stood around the Lord's table where we grab the bread and we grab the juice and, and we remember what Jesus has done for us, we're able to look across the table and see the body of Christ, right? living, um, the flesh and blood of people that come to our community together. Um, I'm able to lock eyes with them. And, and I think that I should never lose my awareness of my need for Jesus. That's why we have the Lord's table. But I should also never lose my awareness of my need for others. And, and that's the body of Christ as well. Uh, I, I'm so glad that we're jumping into this series because if there's anything I've learned in, in my short life is that community isn't optional. When I say community isn't optional, th this is what I mean. Paul writes in Romans, right? This is in Romans chapter 12 from the CEV. He says, if, uh, since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other. And each of us needs all of the others. We can't say to the other parts of the body of Christ that we don't need each other. Community is not this thing that, that we get to pick and choose what's right and what's wrong. We're a part of the community, the body of Christ, together. It's not optional. And I believe, honestly, that, that community is God's answer to so many things. Uh, I, it, I've got a, a small list here, but it's by no means comprehensive. Uh, I think, if anything, it, it should maybe spur us on to, to think about community and in this way that, that community is God's answer to so many problems that, that we experience in life. And so I, I wanna talk about some of these, these things that community is an answer to and, and maybe ask us some questions and give us some action points on 
how we can engage in this ourselves. So th this is the first one. Uh, I, I think that, that community is God's answer to aloneness. I, I guess that's kind of my own made up word around loneliness. And, and the truth is, is uh, Helen could speak to this way better than I ever could. But there's so many people, I think, especially in, in the kind of uh, disruption that we're living with now, who feel alone, who feel lonely, who have, who have nobody to, to be with or to spend time with. And, and Hebrews talks to this, right? It, it says, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another. And so often we, we use that verse as, as kind of a proof text for always having a Sunday morning gathering, that we should never stop getting together on a Sunday, which I believe that that's very important and true. But the crowd is not community, right? Like the crowd is the crowd where we're singing the songs and we're hearing the message. It's not where we get down to the point of where we can really encourage one another, whatever that we're going through. And community offers us that opportunity. It's one of the most important things that I think we've ever been invited to. And, and, and this is a thing that is really important for us in today's day and age amongst all the disruptions that we've experienced over the last couple of years. How can community stir us up, encourage us or spur us on, another version says, to remember to encourage one another, to be together, right? To not stop being together, but to maybe find uh, a deeper way to do that. The crowd can't meet that need, but community can. And that's what the body of Christ really is. Uh, I'm reminded that in, in this space that it's always great to have people to walk through life with us together, right? Like to have these relationships that, that continue to do this, to spur us on. And, you know, I, there's all kinds of, of different relationships that we have in life. And, and today, as I talk about community, uh, I, I want to talk about three different relationships that I've had um, that, or, or communities that I'm a part of that have been really instrumental in, in seeing these different things happen. And, and for me, I've, I've always needed someone to walk with me through life. Um, it's not been easy to always admit that. Uh, but I find that when I engage with that, life's much uh, more memorable. It's, uh, just, it's just so much better. I think it's why we say we're better together. Um, in this season of life, I've got a friend named Jason. I've known Jason um, for longer than I've been married because he was friends with Ellie before he was friends with me. And then when I, I moved to Denver, Colorado, I became his friend very quickly and Ellie was upset with me because all of her friends were now my friends and they liked me better. I don't know why that is. I'm just a likable guy, I guess. Um, but we've gone our different ways, right? Jason lives in Hawaii now and I'm very jealous of that. Um, but he's, he's been a, a really instrumental part of of my life, of, of walking with me. And there have been years where we haven't seen or talked to each other, but recently we've been talking almost weekly uh, about the station of life that we're in and the things that, that are going on. And it's been really beneficial for me and I think for him to have someone to walk through life's obstacles with together. And, and I think it's important for us to remember that, that community is one of these things that is about longevity. Right? It's not just something that we, we do for a short term and then we don't need it anymore. It, it's actually something that we invest in and it continues to build and grow. And when we need it, it's there. And I'm so grateful for Jason. And, and I hope that he can say the same about me. But, but I believe that, that community is an answer. It's God's answer to loneliness. It's God's answer to aloneness. And, and this is a real deal in our life today, I think. The, the second thing that community is, a, is an answer to, is to defeat and failure. Uh, it says this in Ecclesiastes, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. We find that in Ecclesiastes 4. Uh, I think for, for us, an action point out of this is that, that in community, we're meant to protect and watch out for one another. Right, to, to really be on guard for one another, to shine a light uh, ahead for people that are in our lives. 
Um, this is where the rubber really meets the road sometimes for community. I I'm so grateful. I've got um, a bunch of guys in my life. Um, I I'm really, really grateful to God for this because not only do I have a group of guys in my life here on the coast, I've also got a group of guys back in the States that have been my guardians, have been looking out for me and protecting me for, for years now. And I remember when we first started getting together, we'd get together every year and we would you know, play golf, we'd have an overnighter, we'd eat some great food, um, but then we would spend a day where we would tell our stories for the day uh, of the year and we would pray for one another. We would talk through the difficult things that were going on. We would talk through the situations and the circumstances that, that life had thrown at us that year. And we would pray for one another. And, and I'm so grateful to say now, we've been doing this group for 13 years. And when I first moved here to Australia, uh, I missed it for a couple of years. And, and I was trying to work out, like how can I, how can I talk to my wife ab about this? Um, because this is a community that I think is really beneficial, not only to me personally and professionally, but it's also important for me as a dad, for me as a husband, for me as a father. And so I'm trying to, to think about how can I engage in this community, um, even though now I live in another country and it's quite expensive and I'd feel a little bit guilty about flying back to the States and doing these things with um, this group of guys. And I remember sitting there, I'm, I'm trying to think, how can I do this without, without it sounding selfish or, you know, and, and when you know it, it was maybe a day or two later, Ellie comes to me and says, you know what, I really miss the Ryan that was a part of this community. What would it look like for him to re-engage in that community? Because we looked out for one another. We, we protected one another. We prayed for one another. We, we knew each other's stories. And, and that's really difficult sometimes to get, right, in the crowd. We, we need to drill down and, and get into groups of people that we know and we that we trust and who are safe. But we have to be vulnerable in that. Like if I had not developed those relationships, if I was not myself vulnerable um, and courageous to share my story, uh, I, it would have never been to that point of where it was beneficial not only to me, but my entire family. And so I was able to, again, you know, reinvest in that relationship. And it's been a couple of years now since I've been able to be a part of that. I think we all have, have those stories or know those stories of people who have been disrupted by COVID. But it, it's, a, it's a group of people that know me and protect me and pray for me. And I think this is, this is a, a real thing, right? Where community is God's answer to, to despair or to failure and defeat. We need these kinds of people in our life. And the Bible teaches us very clearly that we are better together. And so I hope that, that you'll, you'll think about these action points, right? Who are the people that shine a light for you? Who are the people that you invite into these spaces? Who are the people that encourage you in community? The third thing is, is that community is God's answer to despair and to grief. Uh, Romans, again, from the same chapter that we were in earlier, says that we should be happy with those who are happy and that we should weep with those who weep. Uh, what does it look like for us in community to not have all the answers for why the bad things happened, but to sit with people, to be with them, when did we stop believing that, that community was something about being with people and became fixing people? Right? Like there, there seems to be a tension there where we're uncomfortable if things are messy, but community is okay with messiness. We don't have to fix every problem. Sometimes we just need to sit with people. Sometimes we just need to cry with people. Right? There's so many things that are going on that just aren't the way that we thought they would go. There are so many things in the world that are broken. And, and we can become quite overwhelmed with that at times. And, and community is an answer to that despair. Right? Like 
we can sit in that space together. Um, Romans says we, we, we can celebrate with those who are celebrating and we can cry or mourn with those who mourn. It, it's not like a natural thing, I think, for us to sit in uncomfortableness, to sit in, in mourning or to sit in tragedy and just sit with it. We want to be comfortable. And, and there's just something about tragedy that's incredibly uncomfortable. But I think with, in this context, with the Spirit's help, we're able to sit with people and to mourn with them. I, I'm really incredibly grateful for Tim Lovell who helped me with this, right? I had the, the benefit of, of being an intern for Tim when I was in Bible school. Uh, many of you might not know, but that's how Tim and I uh, began our relationship in, in a church, and then I was his intern when I was going to Bible school. And a part of the, the pastoral classes that we took, you know, you, you had to go with a real pastor and do real pastoral work, and I had not done any of that. And so I had to go on hospital visits with Tim. Uh, I, I, I was made to you know, do some different funeral ceremonies with him as well. And Tim was so gracious to invite me into those spaces as a kid who was in Bible school, who was committed to being right, who, who thought he knew everything, and still invited me into the space knowing that I didn't know what I was doing, knowing that I didn't understand what these verses really meant. And, and I got to watch how he did it. Uh, I got to watch how he loved people, how he celebrated with them when he would do weddings, but also how he would mourn with them when things were at their very lowest. And, and this is what community does, right? This is how community works, that we're together when things are good, but we're also together when things are difficult. And, and I'm so grateful that I had that modeled to me. I remember my first ever uh, kind of hospital visit. It was, it was a tragic accident. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how I could say anything. And I watched as, as Tim didn't say anything. He just went in and sat with the family and wept with the family. And you know, there was time for words later, um, but in that moment, to just sit and to cry and to be together was more healing than anything that I had ever seen to that point. I believe the community is not optional. I believe that community is, is an answer to so many things, to aloneness, to despair, to defeat, to grief. But we have to engage in it. Right? It's not something that happens to us by accident. It's something that we invest in. So community isn't optional. Community is God's answer to, to so many things. But maybe more than anything, community is born out of love. I love what this verse says in Galatians chapter 5. It says, if you're a follower of Christ Jesus, all that matters is your faith that makes you love others. Right? The context of, of this verse is you know, circumcision and uncircumcision. And, and those are important things, especially to this group of believers that were, were fighting and upset. And, and Paul's drilling down into the things that really matter. Right? Like, and, and we've all got lists of what's important versus what's more important. And, and there's going to be things, right? There's going to be answers. There's going to be ways in which community is, is God's answer to you in, in a different way than these three things that I've even talked about today. There's so many things that, that community does. We, we just don't have time to talk about them all. I, I hope that you do engage in conversations of, about all of the ways in which community is God's answer to seeing the kingdom advance in, in this place and on this earth. But unless it's born out of love, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything.
right? And this is what Paul's saying. It, you, you can think it's about this or you can think it's about that. And both of those things have, you know, some, some structure to stand on. But if the structure and the foundation of those things is not love, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that matters is how our faith is expressed through love. And, and that's the way we love one another, right? Is, is, is how people see that, that we love God and what we think is true shows up in how, how we love. It shows up in how we build community, right? Paul doesn't stop with this verse and he goes on to talk in, in Corinthians chapter 13 and I, I just want to read it for us here. It's a few verses, but it, it says this in 1 Corinthians 13. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am nothing. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. If, if I don't live a life of love, this is what I hear Paul saying, if I don't live a life of love, nothing I think will matter, nothing I say will matter, nothing I believe will matter, nothing that I will accomplish will matter if I don't live a life of love. And, and this is the foundation, right? This is the framework for community. It's the basis for all of it. I, I love how Eugene Peterson writes this verse in the message. He says, no matter what I say or believe or what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. I'm literally bankrupt, right? And, and there's a thing, right, about community that is an investment. We often aren't investing in it when we don't need it. But when we need it, do we have it? Have we invested in it? There's, a, a, there's an opportunity in this today for us all to really consider what we believe about community. Is it something that we're entitled to without any investment? Is it a place where the, the church can come in and heal wounds? I, I believe it is but it's also an opportunity for us to be fully known. Community is something that we have to grab hold of, that we have to invest in. And, and I know, right, this is probably the part of the message where, where the pastor has a really great story, right, that makes us laugh, maybe makes us cry right, moves our emotions in such a way as to get us to sign up for a life group that we never wanted to be a part of in the first place. I don't, I don't want to do that today. But I do want to ask you a, a question. 
uh, I want to ask you, are you willing to build community? Right? What does it look like for you to build community? Maybe you're already part of, of a great community that is a part of all of these things that we're talking about, that protects, that, that builds up, that, that sharpens the iron, that helps us see the, the, the kingdom advance. Maybe all of these things, and that's awesome. But maybe you're alone. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you're in despair. Maybe there are things that have not gone the way that you wanted them to go, and what could really make the difference for you right now is community. I believe for us in this season, there is no better way for us to build community than to be involved in some kind of group, right? Maybe it's a group that you start, maybe it's a group that you get together and, and, and talk with people about what's happening uh, on Sundays. Maybe it's a group that just gets together monthly to pray, right? I don't know, but, but I wanna invite you to invest in community. Uh, I, I want to invite you to be a part of community here at Good Life. And, and so next week, we're going to have some signups of, of groups that are based around these things, right? Like connection, care, and development. We've got all kinds of things happening all times during the week, right? There, there's interest groups, there's life groups, and I'm really excited to see some discipleship groups start. We've got Bible studies, we've got marriage groups, right? There are things that have been happening and will continue to happen. But I, I can't sign up for them for you. I, I, can't, I can't do that for you. Jesus can't do that for you either. He's made a way for, for you to be involved in community. Now we have to take hold of it. I have to take hold of it. I have to take ownership of my own choices when it comes to building community, to being vulnerable, to having the courage to take that step, maybe just one step, outside my comfort zone and get involved in building community. That's the way we care for people. That's the way we love people, is by being in community. And so today, as we head into uh, some worship, I, I hope that you'll be encouraged to invest in community afresh. Maybe for the first time in this place, but maybe, maybe give it one more go because this is the way of love. This is the way of being in community. And without that love, I don't have anything at all. I'll be patient, I'll be kind. I won't want what isn't mine That's the way that you love Without it I am nothing at all I'll be humble, I won't boast I will care for others most that's the way we love Without it I am nothing at all Oh Lord Faith can move a mountain in With you oh Lord My hope is complete Love was the first of me I'll be gentle I won't hate I want a man to have my way cause that's the way you love without it Why you lived in the so 
so good to be together. Listen, if you took time to respond um, to that psalm this morning, we would love to hear your response. So you can email that to us. We would also love to hear from you if you have any prayer needs so that we can care for you through that. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Over all the earth and all the ways of men and over every tribe and home in every land and over kingdoms in any throne that this world has ever known let the nations say our god he reigns for greater